Hello there, three books which I'm loosely going to describe as thrillers to look at today. They're all very different. Uh, first of them is Rogue Mail by Geoffrey Household. It's published by Orion in the UK and New York Review of Books Classics in the US and is something of a thriller classic. It was uh, gifted to me by my dad at Christmas and he was very enthusiastic about it, as is Robert McFarlane in his introduction. Um, it's from another era really, this book published near the, I think it's the late 30s it was originally published. And it's not a thriller as I experienced them. It, there's, uh, it's pre-Cold War, it's pre-Bond, it's pre-all of those things. And so what we have is a sort of almost gentleman assassin who finds himself uh, in a position to assassinate a European dictator. And he doesn't. It's almost sport. He finds himself looking down the uh, sight of his rifle, looking at the buttons on this man's waistcoat and thinking, I could, if I wanted to, kill this man, uh, except he couldn't. And he ends up being surprised by a member of the security team and then uh, horribly interrogated and then uh, left in a position where he will meet a rather nasty death. He manages, however, to survive and then manages to escape and get back to the UK, but not, of course, to escape entirely and he is pursued. And so what we have here is a classic sort of pursuit story. Um, the reason why I say it's not a thriller in the modern sense is because we don't have some kind of born identity like chase through Europe. Um, this is a very different kind of chase and it goes back to the beginning of the novel. Uh, a man pursuing his prey, a hunter if you like, looking for, for you know, looking down that sight and he of course becomes the hunted and he becomes like an animal trying to evade his, his attackers and ends up going to ground, ends up going into the British countryside and literally digging himself a burrow and living like an animal in order to evade capture which seems sort of like something from another era because there are those elements of, you know, sort of a, almost being surprised by a policeman on a country lane, which seems so outdated now, which isn't to say that it's not enjoyable because it is enjoyable, but just in a very different way to what I was expecting. Um, I will now go back and read the introduction that Robert McFarlane wrote because at the beginning he says, if you haven't read the book, read the book and then come back and read the introduction. Um, but uh, as I say, you can understand why the book has a classic status, not the sort of thrilling ride that I thought it was going to be, but a very, very complex psychological study of a man being hunted and becoming almost like an animal in that process. Fascinating. Now we move on to Jawbone Lake by Ray Robinson, an author I've been meaning to read for absolutely ages, so glad to get the chance to do it, and this book is published by Heinemann, and uh, begins on New Year's Eve on the edge of a lake in the Peak District. A young woman named Rabbit is standing by the edge of the lake, hears a car uh, sort of careering across the bridge, and it is uh, being chased by another car. It ends up going off the bridge into the water, and presumably the man driving it drowns. Uh, the other car that was chasing it stops on the edge of the bridge, a man gets out and he then sees Rabbit on the edge of the lake and so she hightails it. The man inside that car was, uh, the man inside the car that went into the lake is a man called CJ Arms, a local businessman, something of a hero in the community and certainly a hero to his son, Joe. And because they can find no body in the lake and because they have no idea why this car may have gone off the road, he starts to make his own investigations. So we have two narrative strands. Joe finding out more about his family, uh, his Father had a business in Spain, which he didn't really understand anything about, so he goes over to Spain and finds out more about that. And then we have Rabbit, who is a woman not only dealing with grief because she has lost a child, but also dealing with the fact that she's now been chased by this man. Um, those two strands are very, very different. I'm going to add a third strand to it, which is the landscape, because Robinson writes really brilliantly about the landscape, the Peak District. It's made so, so clear, and it's really evocative, that writing. Um, I really enjoyed reading the book as I was reading it. A few weeks down the line now talking about it, I'm not sure really what else to say about it. It hasn't made a great impression on me as a novel, although I did enjoy it. But it means that I'm, I'm interested now to read more of Robinson's writing um, because he can certainly write. It's just that the book itself, this novel itself, I'm not sure that it's made any great lasting impression on me. So there we go. Finally, we have The Amber Fury by Natalie Haynes. Um, Natalie Haynes is well known as a critic on things like The Review Show, so I was fascinated to get a chance to read her debut novel, and I love the idea of a critic putting their money where their mouth is and actually writing something. So, And I like her criticism as well, so it's really interesting to, to read her novel. Um, another thing that attracted me to it was the fact that it uh, suggested that it might be a bit like The Secret History, because it involved... Uh, sorry, The Secret History by Donna's Hart. Um, uh, because it involved a teacher... Um, using the Greek tragedies to, to help a group of students. It isn't at all like the secret history, uh, stupid of me to think that it would be, simply because of the mention of the Greek tragedies. Um, it concerns another woman who is dealing with grief. This is a woman named Alex, 
and she has lost her fiancé. He was killed. And part of her dealing with that grief is to move up to Scotland because the chance of a job comes up at a place called The Unit, which helps children who've been excluded from schools for various reasons. And one particular class there uh, becomes her focus. They end up becoming very enthusiastic about her teaching of the Greek tragedies, which she uses to help illustrate various things. Um, Haynes is very good with those, obviously, um, with a group of students who have a very basic grasp of some of the things that she's talking about. She has to take great care in how she explains the storylines behind the, the Greek tragedies and what they mean. And so it's very instructive, actually, in all uh, the way that it, it deals with that. Um, if I have a criticism, it is that there is something about the architecture of the novel, the plotting and the, the structure of it, which feels slightly clunky. I'll give you an example. She asks her pupils to keep a diary. The suggestion seems to kind of come out of nowhere, and what that allows us to do in the novel is to read the diary entries of one of the pupils, because it seems she, she's the only one who really kind of goes with the idea. So, and it's important for us to kind of get inside the head of this character, so that's why it's there. It just feels like a slightly clunky device to get that information across. And there is also something slightly convenient about the teaching of the Greek tragedies and how that goes through the novel. That is kind of first novelitis, so I'm not, I'm not going to be too harsh about that, um, but I'm just pointing it out because it means that as much as I enjoyed reading the book, I did feel at times that I that it was just a bit too square-edged, and I would love to see whether Haynes can make her writing slightly rounded and slightly more subtle because, to, to get rid of those those plot devices and those, those structures. Um, but a, a very interesting book, and very interesting to see how three novels that I've called thrillers are all very, very different kinds of thrillers. Psychological thrillers, or thrillers of the mind, or thrillers of the body, um, often dealing people dealing with grief as well. It's interesting how that seems to be a unifying factor. So that's those three books. Next, I could be looking at anything from werewolves to the Second World War. So you'll just have to tune in and find out. Thank you for watching this.